You must understand that God wants you to prove and experience Him through your situations all the time. And everything as the Word of God says that happens to us happens for the better, not for the worse. So you begin to set your mind on success in God. That's what God wants us to do. No matter what the challenge are, no matter who may not like you on your job. Hey, listen here. You prove God. God, see that person over there doesn't like me? Father, in the name of Jesus, cause me to do something for that person or to, to be an example of that person. And that person will have no other recourse than to like me. See? That's my enemy, God. Let my enemy be at peace with me. So you've got to do these things to prove these things in your daily walk with God. See? So that you can grow in grace and in the knowledge and power that he has given to you. If he lives on the inside of you in the person of his Holy Spirit, then his power is there. What are you doing with it? Do you understand that it is there? He's there for you to use him. And we can only use him when we do this. So now, we have to get beyond our own pride and our own excuses. Because God says, in other words, whatever you believe you can receive, you, you get it. It doesn't matter where you come from, how much money your parents have, who, nothing. It matters for you, your heart. Many of us come from some very humble beginnings. Many of us uh, grew up in houses with two and three and four rooms, not bedrooms, rooms. You have the parents have a room, all the children have one room. You have a living room, or what we used to call it at that time, the front room. And then you have a a dining room with a kitchen all in one. Well, look as it is today. Some of you now have your own home, your own yard, your own house. You get many rooms. <laughs> See? You believe God for that. That's just an example. See? It is God's will that you have what you desire. That's what he said. You want a huge house? God said, you follow me. Hey, listen here. It's yours. There is nothing that God will not give to you if you follow walk in obedience to his word. So now the challenge is, change some stuff. What is it that you need to change in your life, in your attitude, in your thinking, in your behavior, in your mind? What it is in your will? What it is that you need to change in order to begin seeing God's work done in your life? The challenge to us today basically is this word. If my word abides in you, and you abide in it, you will do everything that you need to do with my power. That's what he's saying there. See? That's what God is saying. Okay? First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 5. Your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in that same power that he's given. How much confidence do you have in God? Tell me how much confidence do you have in God to believe God and to trust him? Even though what you're looking at seems to be in, in, in contra, contravention to, to what you where you're going. The same power. If you have no power of God acting in your life, then you are a weak Christian. The enemy will come and destroy you. And you know what prevents the power of God from coming in? Our conscience. Things that you've done, you're sorry for. Confess them and move on. That's what the Word of God says. That's what He tells us to do. See what I'm saying? And you will see a difference that will happen in your life, in your home, in your relationship, in your family. That's what will happen. See? That same power of God that exists within you. Many times we believe that we get no power. But the power is demonstrated through not your will, but the will of God when you exercise your confidence in His will, in His power, in His authority. See what I'm saying? And that's the will of God for you. I don't know if you like fishing, but the Lord knows the fishing. 